Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back Monday. Let's take a look what we got going on. Well, first, it's December. That's phenomenal. We'll talk a little bit more about what we have going on here at TFNN in December. Let's take a look at the markets first with the ES trading up 0.42%. We have the Russell Futures trading up 2.37%. Uh, NQs at 0.16, Dow Futures at 0.7. We have gold. Gold has made a phenomenal move recently, uh, currently trading at $2,089 uh, on the gold contract itself. One of the biggest winners, we were looking at it uh, in the den. It's down a little bit today, but look at this immense move. I mean, we're, this is Vista Gold. Okay, we've, we've had uh, Fred Ernest, the CEO, on a few times. Um, let's take a look at this least on the weekly, some massive movement and some pretty strong volume uh, going up as well. Uh, this stock was kind of lagging behind a little bit with the rest, uh, while the rest of the gold contract was moving up, uh, but it finally took off. So that's pretty neat to see. We have silver trading it uh, up about 0.78% right now. Copper contract uh, up 1.62%. We have crude. So there's been a lot of talk going on with crude recently, uh, especially regarding potential cuts that OPEC plus uh, we'll be making, we'll talk a little bit about it today as uh, one of the headlines was that the OPEC plus members have agreed on additional output cuts. And then so then you ask, why is the contract going down? We'll talk a little bit about what investors, uh, how they're kind of digesting that information and kind of the whole sit rep of that situation in general. We'll get to that. Tesla trading about flat right now at 238.40. Elon made some uh, big headlines recently uh, regarding his visit to Israel, prior comments uh, regarding that situation, and then what he said about Bob Iger recently. Um, some people are considering or at least taking the kind of downtick in Disney as a kind of consequences of Elon's comments, but I'm not sure how accurate that is. Uh, needless to say, Disney is trading down. Uh, we were trading about at our highest here, about 96.59. This was sweet, uh, especially if you were a Disney bag holder. But we're traveling back down here uh, to 92.33 currently. We have the dollar trading at 103.26. So some really nice down movement, at least over the past uh, month in it. Uh, we had an uptick uh, yesterday and the day prior as well. Uh, but we'll see if we can move down here in the dollar, the QQQ is trading at 389.78, Google at 133.16, Meta at 324.78, and Apple at 191.10. All right, let's talk a little bit about the crude oil. I spoke about, uh, I think the last time I was on, or maybe two times ago, how OPEC plus, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia uh, was really the influencer in this, um, but they were talking about reducing uh, oil output. Okay, this is obviously going to increase the prices uh, for the rest of the world. America produces the most oil for sure, but of course you have this whole mixed bag uh, with with Russia, Saudi Arabia being the top three after that, uh, and then a handful of others as well. Uh, this kind of obviously reduces the supply, increases the price, um, and then we're you know moving into winter uh, in the West, and, and so this kind of can can cause some issues, essentially, right? So we'll talk a little bit on this. The OPEC Plus group on Thursday agreed to additional output curbs of 1 million barrels per day. OPEC Plus, I believe OPEC is the, uh, the Gulf nations. OPEC Plus, I think, adds Russia and Mexico, and I think one more after that as well. Uh, but Russia and Mexico being the biggest players added in OPEC Plus. Uh, the OPEC Plus group on Thursday agreed to additional output curbs of 1 million barrels per day in a move aimed at sending prices higher. The deeper reductions come alongside an extension of Saudi Arabia's unilateral reduction of 1 million barrels per day. Uh, the move was confirmed by delegates at the meeting of the Coalition of Oil Producers and their allies. A uh, lack of mention of additional cuts in the official press release following OPEC, OPEC Plus's meeting led traders. So this is, this is why we have some downward movement in it. The lack of mention of additional cuts in the official press release following OPEC Plus's meetings uh, led traders to believe those reductions were voluntary and not reductions to official requirements. Okay, the quotas for each country announced individually. So when there was discussion before this meeting, this was kind of sending the prices up a little bit. Um, of course, not too much because there's a lot of uncertainty with it. Um, and now the fact that there was not an official release uh, kind of has traders looking at, is this really going to be a long-term thing? Uh, and will it even be seen through? We'll say here, the West Texas Intermediate, 
Futures sank more than 2%, closed 75.96 per barrel at the Brent crude. International benchmark price settled at 82.83. And of course, Brazil is also joining OPEC. I was talking a little bit about the potential for Venezuela uh, to be joining the scene in selling their oil abroad if they could uh, secure a safe democratic election. Well, it turns out um, <laughs> that might not happen. There, there is some conflict going on with Suriname, which is a neighboring country to Venezuela. And I guess the government is trying to push the country into a conflict with Suriname. At least that's kind of what the headlines uh, and some of the stories lead us to believe. And that would obviously uh, dampen kind of any expectation for Venezuela. I would say getting into the, the world scene in, in a major way and adding another producer to the market, which of course would add uh, to supply. We'll see what happens. We'll take a look today. What did I? Oh, yes. We look at Pfizer. So, okay. They were having some issues with their stock price uh, because COVID is virtually over, at least in the public perception. Uh, not as many uh, vaccines are being purchased. They had a pop up, um, I think around this day here, uh, on kind of news about a new cancer treatment. Excuse me, excuse me, not cancer. We'll talk about that. Uh, weight loss treatment. Okay, so you've been seeing a lot of companies, uh, Eli Lilly, some others, um, pushing these kind of uh, weight management pills, right? Uh, these are continual use pills. Uh, regardless, uh, they got cleared for FDA use. It's like Wagovi um, for obesity uh, management. So Pfizer was pushing that they're going to have a twice a day weight loss pill as well. Um, this kind of had the stock rebound a little bit. However, it seems that they've actually uh, stopped testing on it and studying on it because uh, there are adverse side effects. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. I want to talk a little bit about that and also talk about some of the side effects with Wagovi and uh, Novo's uh, weight loss pill as well. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.